Our product is Palmiscope. Lung care made simple. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and pneumonia are prevalent respiratory diseases. In the U.S. alone, there are 1.3 million visits in the emergency that are diagnosed as pneumonia. Every year, approximately 50,000 patients will die from pneumonia. COPD impacts approximately 15 million Americans as a consequence of many in in illnesses, such as cystic fibrosis. There are an estimated 140,000 deaths yearly in America from COPD. The graphic on the slide represents the amount of deaths in the U.S. annually that are caused by COPD and pneumonia and other causes. The two diagnoses share many of the same symptoms, including shortness of breath, chest pain, and coughing. The result of these similarities is a diagnostic challenge with a significant impact on patient outcomes. The current diagnostic processes focuses on the use of chest x-rays to distinguish between the two conditions. However, according to studies completed at the University of Illinois, the accuracy of chest x-rays are also lacking, with an estimate of 30-50% to 50 of patients receiving incorrect diagnoses. These images show how pneumonia and COPD may, occur, may appear on a chest x-ray. Airway blockage is clear in the COPD image by the distinct white spot circled. In the pneumonia x-ray, we can see white covering the general area of the lungs. From speaking with over 20 ICU physicians and nurses, we also learned that doctors with experience are able to use a stethoscope and listen to features of breathing such as crackles and wheezes that are also able to advise diagnosis. This, however, is a skill that comes with years of experience and due to the accessibility of chest x-rays in a hospital is a skill that is less often being trained. Palmoscope is our solution. With an algorithm that primarily uses frequency, we're able to identify crackles and wheezes from stethoscope recorded breathing data. Palmoscope can offer a diagnosis and its estimated accuracy to assist clinicians and nurses in place of an x-ray. This can be useful for less experienced clinicians both inside and outside of the hospital environment. Palmoscope is not designed to be a continuously worn device because there is a smaller need for these devices. In the ICU environment, doctors will use monitoring technology that offers enough clues to know if a diagnosis is necessary, at which time palmoscope can be used. For patients outside of the ICU, the immediate notification of one of these diagnoses is not as important. Palmoscope still, uses, still gives users the option to listen and is thus an assistant to the diagnostic process and not a replacement. We hope to match the accuracy of the chest x-ray to fit in the diagnostic process as a potential replacement. Palmoscope will also include a teaching feature that can help users gain listening-based diagnostic experience to be less reliant on the device in the future. Palmoscope includes three components. One, a recording stethoscope, such as the 3M Whitman electronic stethoscope. Two, any Windows-operated laptop. And three, our Python-based software. A user would operate Palmoscope by doing the following. One, collecting breathing data from a patient by recording on the electronic stethoscope. 2. Importing the files into the PC computer. And 3. Throughout our user interface, uploading .wav audio files into the software to be analyzed. Generally, electronic stethoscopes can hold multiple recordings, and so users can collect from various locations on a patient for analysis. The user can then go and analyze all of these different recordings at once, rather than recording, uploading, and analyzing in different cycles. The total workflow time should, between, should be between 3 and 5 minutes. On the side, you can see the six locations that it's best to record the patient's breathing data from. Each sample should be 15 to 30 seconds long. The time it takes for the software to run a diagnosis should average at two minutes. The software is designed to be used by a medical professional and not by a potential patient or family member. Therefore, the results include information about the diagnosis to help the user understand what characteristics led to the diagnosis. The goal of the design is largely based on accuracy. Based on our research, the accuracy of chest x-ray diagnosis for pneumonia and COPD is somewhere between 50 and 70 percent. Therefore, we want to match and improve the accuracy to be a replacement tool. We're aiming for an accuracy of our software between 60 and 80 percent. In order to assure usability, we also aim to keep the workflow simple and the overall procedure time under five minutes. These design decisions were advised by the physician who we interviewed to understand the overall problem. So the design process on this began with a group attempting to diagnose lung diseases, but trying to find a low-cost instrument that would have a verifiable and repeatable and reproducible way to go about this. We found many papers and acoustics that goes to support the idea of features of different lung diseases having distinct sounds in the human body that a device such as a stethoscope could pick up on. Looking into this marketplace, there were several devices that could identify single features such as coughs, wheezes, 
and coarse breathing, but none of them link these to a diagnosis of a particular disease. Our research has led us to believe that COPD, given its high prevalence and three largely distinct features, would be a uniquely identifiable disease from the sound data. Hi, now welcome to back-end design. This is the summary of our back-end design process. First, we took every sa sound sample of the nearly 7,000 sound samples and performed a 1D fast Fourier transform on them. We then interpolated data points up to 4,000 hertz and then used the linear classification statistical analysis tool in MATLAB to trim the data down to 360 main predictors. Once we had that, we reran analysis on these new predictors with different types of linear classification and support vector machine algorithms, as well as a dense layer neural network, and then a couple types of convolutional algorithms that ran on an MFCC plot using Labrosa. Final algorithm ended up using the original FFT and 360 main predictors that would import into a support vector machine classifier because it had the optimum amount of accuracy and resource cost. In the bottom left, you can see a Fourier transform of an unhealthy and healthy patient and see how their lung sounds differ based on their diagnoses. And in the bottom right, you can see a histogram of where our main predictors were relative to original um, frequencies we had. The software we built is very versatile using Python and its package TensorFlow and landing on an algorithm that wouldn't take too much computer power to deal with hospitals that have outdated and unattended computer resources, such as the articles below show. The software is very scalable as well for future implementations. It allows us to change out the algorithm with the way it's built, and we can add more diseases as we collect more data. The literature does also show that other diseases have distinct features that can be found in the Fourier spectrum, so we hope that's an indication. Here we discuss the front-end design. The first front-end feature of the application is the analysis feature. This feature is used by physicians and nurses who have collected recordings of breathing and can upload the dot .wav files to the user's window computer. The user interface allows for the user to navigate to the dot .wav file on their computer, load it to the software, and then analyze the file. The user can play back the file in the software itself to confirm that they have the right one. After selecting the Analyze file button, the diagnostic results will appear in the interface itself. The results include a conclusive diagnosis as well as a measured accuracy. More details would include graphical images of the diagnosis. Here are our major results. Using 5,000 training breaths and around 1,200 testing breaths, we obtained a 95.7% testing accuracy on our holdout dataset. Additionally, we held out an intentionally noisy data set that we personally collected and obtained an 80% accuracy on that with a maximum of 5 seconds of breathing per landmark. This data would show how the, set, the software works in non-hospital, non-ideal settings conducted by absolute amateurs. Some validation notes to show how robust our algorithm is were that the training holdout and intentionally noisy data sets shared no patience. Additionally, we trained on four different stethoscope models to ensure that most, most hardware types were supported. Also, we collected our own HUP datasets to show that datasets outside of our database would work well as well. This was sadly suspended after three patients. Statistics in medically relevant stats at the bottom left shows how our data fared in accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, PPV, and MPV. Four out of the five. Um, metrics were above 90%, with PPV being the only one below, resting around 70%. We were very happy with these results, and the fact that while sensitivity and MPV are very near 100%, accuracy and specificity are around 95%, the fact that we had to sacrifice PPV for this numbers was a willing sacrifice just because PPV determines how likely a positive test is correct, and we'd rather err on that side a little than erring on the NPV side and misdiagnose people as negative. This is because this is a serious and very prevalent disease, and the stethoscope should be used as a method to get someone more intensive treatment. 
We have also added a teaching feature to our application. This is because residents are wary of using a stethoscope because of the easy alternatives available to them, although they can be more costly and time consuming, such as x-rays. Residents can train on a database of breathing samples. With this technology, they will now have the ability to analyze and confirm sounds they record. This tool will allow students to use our stethoscope with confidence in real time. The teaching software works by uploading a file from the hundreds of recordings that we provided in a folder. With the uploaded file, the user can listen to the audio and then take a quiz to determine the patient's diagnosis. With this, the user will be told if they are correct or, in or incorrect, and then we plan on including the accuracy that the algorithm calculated. We would structure the quiz so that the questions become harder with lower accuracies being the distinguishing factor. This way, a sense of trust is instilled in the software, with the accuracies being shown as well. There's a general cost to misdiagnosis. Studies were completed on the accuracy of diagnosis of COPD. I've attached the links for this research. As you can see, much of COPD is underdiagnosed, and misdiagnosis is extremely prevalent, showing that there is much an inaccuracy in just using x-rays as a diagnostic tool. Of course, with overtreatment and diagnosis, there is a significant financial cost. As you can see, about $750 billion in the U.S. is wasted due to misdiagnosis and all the issues it leads to. A portion of these costs can be attributed to COPD, although we do not have an accurate enough estimate. But based on these numbers, we can assume that it is at least in the millions. For our estimated costs, there are three components. The first being a desktop or laptop, which has to be a PC based, not an Apple product, because it is incompatible with the Litman software. However, since there are already PCs and desktops everywhere in hospitals, there is no additional cost to a hospital or nursing home. They are also portable and usually many on a floor at one time, making it easily accessible. The, our next component component is the 3M Lippmann stethoscope, which costs less than $400, and actually many doctors and nurses own this particular model from our background research. Finally, we determined our software should cost an annual subscription of $400, as exhibited by other devices of the same caliber. Because we cannot determine our exact market size, but can estimate that there are millions of COPD cases that need proper diagnosis, as seen in our previous research from the slide before, this cost can be justified. In addition, the Butterfly, a handheld ultrasound de device, which is $2,000 plus $56 per month for a subscription, subscription, uses a similar software to ours that helps train medical professionals. So here is our spring project timeline. In March, we began collecting unhealthy patient data from hospitals such as HUP before it was locked down. We began testing the workflow of our software and made the front end even more user-friendly based on those results. We, in April, began to further refine our back end. We would have collected data from smaller institutions, continued to test, gather input from physicians, and validate our model on the hospital data that was sadly canceled due to coronavirus. In May, we would then determine how the software fits a clinical physician's workflow and then make final adjustments necessary to the front and back end to optimize it to fit that workflow. Beyond the end of the semester, our future plans would involve collecting more patient data, both healthy and unhealthy, especially those of the elderly, because we were lacking healthy patient recordings for them. In fact, one major ambition would be to collect data from coronavirus patients as well, as a stethoscope such as ours could possibly distinguish between the symptoms for that and pneumonia if we were to collect frequency data. Another step would be to remove the middleman software we currently use from Litman. In order to record using the stethoscope, we need to upload the files using their software first. Ultimately, we would like to get rid of this step so users can upload audio files directly to our platform. Another goal of ours would be to make recording time shorter for doctors and nurses. 
At the moment, we use at least 10 to 20 seconds in our recordings for our analysis, with six recordings being taken. Hopefully, we would be able to cut this time down to one breath cycle or three sec seconds with only one recording needed to be taken. Finally, we would want to remove the need for a laptop or PC. At the moment, the stethoscope has a USB dongle, which is necessary for the Bluetooth connection to be maintained. If we were to get rid of this dongle and have it transmit to multiple devices, this would make it easier for collection in general. It would also make this possible to build the analysis into the stethoscope then, renew removing the need for an external device. With these steps, we would be able to take Pulmoscope further into the future. Thank you. Wow, this is a lot of references.